All right, I hope all those practice sessions gave you a lot of preparation on how to tackle your system design interview. If you're lucky, you might even get that same question. But at a high level, I think it taught you how to think about these problems and how to approach them. And in the remaining part of this course, I want to go at an even higher level and go beyond the scope of just system design interviews and give you some insight as to what interviewers are actually looking for in your technical interviews in general, not just a system design one, because I've got a lot of insight to share with you from my time as a hiring manager at Amazon and the things that they're looking for isn't always what you expect. So what are hiring managers actually looking for? Like I said before, it's more than just your technical skills. They want to look at your soft skills just as much. They want to see that you have determination, grit, perseverance, whatever you want to call it. They want to make sure that you have the internal drive and motivation to solve new problems and find new solutions on your own. You're not going to be given recipes of how to solve the problems you're given. You need to have the determination to figure these things out collaboratively, of course, you know, when appropriate, but you've got to have the determination to get things done with minimal guidance. You shouldn't need to have someone pushing you forward all the time. You need to be curious enough and driven enough to solve new problems that haven't been solved before. That's what they want. It's a hard thing to find. Why? Because technology changes quickly. So, the things they might be quizzing you on from a technological standpoint, that technology might be obsolete a year from now. You know, we talked about things like Apache Spark or Hadoop or whatever. Hadoop's already, you know, kind of on the decline, right? So the value of testing your knowledge on specific technologies really isn't that high. But your ability to adapt to new technologies as they come out, your, your ability to self-learn and continue to drive yourself forward, that's what's hard to find. That's what they really want to see. Your determination to learn new technologies or changes to technologies as they come out going forward. That's what people want in the long term. So yeah, you still need to prove you can code. You know, that's not going to go away. You're still going to have to code on the whiteboard and show that you can actually think in terms of coding and think in terms of assembling technical solutions from discrete components on a whiteboard or whatever digital equivalent it is, depending on the setting. So yes, your tech skills still matter, but they're really just table stakes. You know, that's sort of the, uh, the way of getting your foot in the door. First thing they're gonna ask you is some really simple coding question, and that's just to weed out the people who just can't function, right? <laughs> but once you get past that initial hurdle of technology, what they're really gonna be looking for is your perseverance and your inner qualities that will make you a good long-term hire that can adapt to new changing technologies. So how do you demonstrate perseverance? That's kind of a hard thing to show, right? Well, interviewers have their way, but a good way to approach this is by telling them a story, okay? Hiring managers are usually trained to do something called behavioral interviewing. So they're not going to ask you, did you do X, where you can just lie about and say, yeah, I did X. I'm, I'm great at, at whatever that is. Uh, they want to hear stories that they can dig into about how you demonstrated whatever quality they're trying to find out about. So make sure you have those stories ready. If they want a story about how you handled a very tough technical problem or how you handled some conflict within your team or how you handled uh, convincing your manager to do something the right way, uh, have those stories in your back pocket because those are things you can talk about to prove that you've actually dealt with these situations before and how you dealt with them. And the interviewer will dig into it. You know, that's the whole idea behind behavioral interviewing. They say, give me an example of when you did this. And you say, I did this this way. And then they will dig into details so like, okay, tell me more about this aspect of it. And that's their way of confirming that you really did what you said you did, right? Like they can tell if you're lying that way. So come prepare with those stories about how you solve challenging problems in the past at your past employers, in the world of academia, wherever you came from, even in a self-taught environment, you know, some Kaggle challenge you had a trouble with. Uh, the interviewer will dig into details to make sure that you're not lying about it. Uh, but have those stories ready to go because that's really how you're going to demonstrate things like perseverance to your interviewer. Have a story about where you, where and when you demonstrated perseverance in the real world. And there's no better proof that you can do things than to say, hey, I've already done this before. I can tell you all about it. 